Good afternoon. So I do believe it's like August 29th or something today. We finally have a nice spray day. There's hardly any wind out there whatsoever. Um, there are the combines. They are rolling down back here on the main farm. Um, I think we're like, we're gotta be getting close to being half done, but uh, maybe we're not quite there yet. So normally I'd be combining, but I took my combine up north, remember? And I'm gonna be going up there tomorrow Hopefully it's dry enough to uh, chew down on some lentils. But uh, since it's not as of yet, I am back here uh, spraying with the Case Trident. So we are loaded, and because we're loaded, we can only do about 25 miles an hour. Where are we going? That's a really good question. We are actually going north uh, about works out to about 70 or so miles. So, 70-ish miles at 25 miles an hour. Now that we won't be at an average 25, I bet you we can really only average about 20 to 22. Just due to, we got hills to climb, because we're loaded, we're gonna lose a lot of speed. And then uh, when we get on the highway, we're gonna have to, uh, we won't be able to just meet, we won't be able to just be meeting people anytime we wanted to, so. Better uh, start slowing her down here. Sorry about that. So yes, the Trident is definitely the biggest con with the Trident is its um, cab noise. It is quite loud. Yes, the, the John. Yeah, why is it loud? Because the engine's up front on the Case Trident. Only on the Case Patriot sprayers is the engine on the back. Don't be confused. on the uh, Case 4440 Patriot uh, sprayer this afternoon and uh, it all of a sudden decided that it was gonna, while I was in my job, it was it just decided it was gonna quit mapping and quit spraying at the same time. So that's new. So anyway, I had to email my dealer about that. I have to get that taken a look at it. I went through the monitor trying to figure it out and I'm thinking it's a wiring issue somewhere because we've had a, we've been having a lot of wiring issues on the Patriots prayers. Though in saying that, this one's been pretty good. You know, we only have 370 hours on this thing, which is basically a brand new sprayer. We just got it last year. And uh, the auto boom decided to quit working on this sprayer. And I haven't quite figured out why. Oh, I think there's a sensor actually. It thinks that it's folded in, but really it isn't folded in, so uh, Hopefully we can knock off two birds with one stone with a service truck. Um, hopefully tomorrow, but uh, we'll see how that goes. I won't be here, obviously. I gotta head north, but. So yes, I'm gonna be spraying without auto boom. You don't need to have auto boom. It is convenient. Though the field that I'm going to, it's kind of mountainous. And uh, if I have to spray it at night, which I'm thinking I might have to, because it's gonna be dark by the time I get up there, unless Ashley's gonna come pick me up. But uh, that won't be fun, spraying that field at night without auto boom. But anyways. And you do actually have some farms, but they are uh, few, far, and between down in this uh, neck of the woods. These are some good friends of ours, some good neighbors. You know, I don't know why I haven't taken this rail off yet, this railing. But apparently I haven't. I keep forgetting. Honeybees, those are the, definitely the honeybee transports. I recognize those. And they run case combines, I do believe. I can't tell Ashton that or she would wander her way up here and be offering if she could uh, be doing a little combining with them. <laughs> um, speaking of Ashton, no, she is not on a combine this year. Um, she is getting quite pregnant. Um, we are due beginning of November and uh, so for that reason, she has opted off a combine for the first season. 
in a long time. So I think it is a little bit hard on her because she is used to being in the harvest rush and running combines and equipment and so on and so forth. And well, now she's not. She has been doing some swathing up north and some odd jobs like that. But and maybe she does a little bit of combine up north. But to bunk her down in a combine cab for two months every day, day in, day out, um, no, we opted uh, to take this fall off for her. As we are uh, coming out into this valley here, um, you guys have probably seen this valley before. Um, we take a lot of our equipment through here. I'm just gonna slow down. Because we are loaded and you don't wanna over rev the sprayer. The case sprayers don't really put brakes in. The, yes, they do have one. Yes, I have my shoes on because there's no carpet. But if you touch this brake, it's gonna lock this thing up and just rev the engine to about 2,500 RPM and then bring you right to a complete stop. It's not like it's a brake in a vehicle where you can actually push on it and help slow your RPMs down. That's not the case. Don't ask me why. So as you can see, there is no trees except for ones that are planted. We are in the bald prairies out here. some rattlesnakes in this area obviously but uh, I haven't seen any I thought that I stick around to look for them though either so we have antelope we have mule deer we have white tailed deer we have moose the occasional elk will go through we got a few cougars out here we got fox Coyotes, probably some other things that I forgot about. Hawks and owls, burrowing owls even. Though those are pretty rare, you don't see those around very often. But out here in the prairies, so you will see them. They seem to take up refuge in like uh, an abandoned gopher hole. Um, what is all this used for? Oh, there's a deer right there. Um, down the ditch. Cattle. It's all pasture. This is not farmable ground. That's rare that you see that. Most of the time the deer uh, always jump the barbed wire fence and antelope always go under. It's rare that we saw a deer kind of go between the wires. There is a small dam over there. Basically, we call that uh, a big slough. <laughs> well, I guess we just about a lake to us, but. And uh, they do use some of that for uh, flood irrigation down here. If you're wondering. Can you use that on your crops, Mike? No, there's not nearly enough water uh, to irrigate your crops. We got lots of sagebrush down in here. Kind of that blue looking stuff over there as well. I should fit, I should fit. I should fit, I should fit, I should, I should. Keep it center. Oh yeah. And 
right here, we're, if you look to your left, you'll see a channel where they run some water to your right. Sorry, it's boom, you can't see it. We pretty much missed it, but there is some channels out there. Uh, Man-made, obviously. We got some beehives over there for pollination. Bees are important. And uh, they'll flood irrigate uh, this alfalfa and grass for uh, cattle guys. And then they will uh, bale it up and feed it. That's what they'll do. Can you grow crops out here? That's a really good question. Actually, this is really, really heavy clay. It's like at the bottom of a valley. Um, I think the odd person's tried growing a crop, but I, from my knowledge, and I could be wrong, it doesn't produce very well. And since it's flood irrigated, it's easy to drown your crop out, to my knowledge, versus the grass can uh, sustain like a lot of water on it and it soaks it up. I should also probably comment that uh, things are quite a bit greener now than if we would have been doing a video even a month ago. These last three weeks, I think it's like three weeks or something like that, um, we have had a significant amount of rain. Basically, I think our rain is COVID delayed like everything else. Um, we ordered it in May, June, and it is now showing up in August, September, when we technically don't want it. Um, why don't we want it is because I've said before that rain during the harvest season will uh, downgrade and bleach out your crops. So that's kind of salt on an already infected wound. Uh, but anyways, as farmers, we don't like to turn the rain away because obviously we just went through the whole summer and it didn't rain. We, it forgot to rain or was back ordered, I guess. And we have received around, everywhere is different, but I think it's a, I think a three inch three inches would be fairly general maybe some places a little more maybe some places a little less um, so we're just nicely getting harvesting again we've just got going I think within the last two days or something like that otherwise we've been sitting for a long time ever since we pulled that grain auger up um, and what was that I was like that was definitely a couple weeks ago for sure so anyway I just wanted to give you a bit of a rain update and obviously it's greening up all of our grass. It's second growth in all of the crop, which isn't a very good thing. And uh, it's definitely fired up all the weeds that were kind of sitting uh, stagnant in the fields. Now they are definitely running on all eight. Also when you're climbing hills, you don't really want to let the sprayers lug down. Okay, so 25 is our top speed. We're running 2250 RPM there. Um, tell you why when we finish here. I'm going to pull back on the hydro. Keep my RPMs high. We can maintain 2,000. There we go. What we're doing here is we're trying to ease the hydro burden because uh, this is how you blow o-rings out you just go full hammer on this puppy and make that thing lug and then I uh, guarantee you we're gonna blow an o-ring out of this thing before we even get up the hill why because it happens it happens all the time if you get operators in here that are green and just go full ham or full jam and uh, they'll blow an o-ring out every stinking time so you want to ease the hydro keep your rpms up and you'll have a lot less O-ring issues from my experience. Now that's a pretty steep hill though. Um, I do believe it's gotta be around that 7%. It might not be steep to you guys, but for a fully loaded Trident, that is a hill. Same thing when we're going down the hill, we're revving up to 2600 RPM. That means we were almost didn't slow down enough coming back down. Right now we're just going through some crazy hills here, okay? And uh, remember, we can't use our brake. 
crazy. It's so stupid. But anyways, we'll be out of these uh, hills here um, pretty soon. I'm going to show you these brakes. We're only going to about five mile an hour here, so we don't uh, wreck anything because we are loaded. I'm just going to nicely touch the brake, try and ease on it, ease on it, ease up. Oh. Stop just right to zero. Then you have to pull your hydro back, and then you can take off again. Let's just do that again. That's except let's, this time. Let's stomp on it. Same result. Pull hydro back. Let's do this again. Let's go a little bit faster, shall we? Let's do. Let's do about seven. Just touch it. Just touched it. Just touched it. Brings it right to a stop. Pull the hydro back. That is that is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I know some people are like, ah, oh, if you just, you're not doing it quite right, Mike, if you just touch the brake, I just, just touch the brake, it'd bring it right to a zero. Now, you do that at about 40 miles an hour. Let me tell you, if you don't have your seatbelt on, you are going through that window. So, uh, if you get noobs in here, or like when we're training guys, that's something that we stress. Yes, it has a brake pedal, but you cannot use it, unless it's an emergency situation, where you're literally just gonna lock the sprayer up and you're just gonna drag all the wheels. That's that's all it's good for. It's basically an emergency, oh crap, hit the brakes and you're gonna you're gonna have to fold it. You're gonna you take your booms if you're in field mode and you're gonna fold them around to the, about the front of your sprayer and then hopefully they're gonna spring back, but it's it's incredibly hard on stuff. Incredibly hard on stuff. Like just put a freaking brake in that I can use like a freaking vehicle. Or at least an engine brake. Come on, at least give me an engine brake like a semi or uh, like our tractors. <sighs> All right, rant over. We need to stop, do our periodic check. What are you checking for, Mike? Well, we're checking for oil leaks. That doesn't look good. That's, uh, that's from the air conditioner. From the air conditioner. I was a little worried for a second. So, so far everything looks good. All right, let's get back at it. We are getting closer. So I'm pretty sure the new Tridents can get up to, I think you might be able to get up to 40 mile an hour with them loaded. So this winter we're gonna have to maybe see if we can get some new software put in these things. Because 25 is pretty painful, like my Patriot sprayer loaded will do 33. John Deere's I think do 30, I think they do 30 loaded. And there's the Trident. <laughs> it's been dead calm for like the last hour. 45 minutes or something and uh, now we're starting to find some traffic. Come on! Beautiful evening you guys. Beautiful evening. Great spring evening.
almost there. All right, we are here. Get some lights on around this operation. There it is. See our weeds that we're trying to go and kill? probably have all of a two bushel lentil crop here and by the look of it we have about a 10 bushel kosher crop we are going to boom out that little rumbling that you heard normally that tells you that you're low on hydraulic oil but no light to tell us that we're low on hydraulic oil. I should probably check my hydraulic oil level as soon as we're done moving out. Oops, sorry. So what we're spraying now is we are not spraying Roundup. Um, we are spraying Reglone Ion. That's the trade name, also known uh, by the chemical name Diquat. So uh, basically all that is, is you spray it on the plant and it, um, it will disrupt the membranes, the cell membranes of the plant, which also will affect the photosynthesis of the plant. And it basically is an acid and it will get burnt down. Um, the plant will not take the chemical in, it just literally burns whatever it touches including you. You probably shouldn't get it on you. Definitely don't get it in your eyes. So that is what we're spraying. And by doing that, you can seed save. So you would normally spray that on something you want to save, save your seed on because um, it won't affect your seed at all because remember, the plant isn't actually taking this in. It's just basically like acid you're pouring on. It's just going to burn the exterior of the plant down. And it won't really kill the plant, at least not in our experience. It just burns it down brown and crisp, and it will do it very quickly within like three to five days, uh, maybe seven days, depending on what rate you use. Um, so my experience is you want to spray it in the evening, and in about five days you'll come back and these things will be crispy brown. And again, you didn't, you're not killing the plant from within, you're just burning it off. And then if you were to get some more rain or whatnot, if you left it for maybe even 10 days, two weeks, it can actually start growing again. If the plant isn't dead, you just severely burnt it down and it's just going to keep going. Um, so normally you want to spray it, get it, get it combined, and get moving on. But as you can tell, we don't have much of a crop there at all. But uh, I guess it is what it is, so I'm going to get spraying. So, as you guys know, I didn't really want to have to do any more spraying than I actually have to. Um, you know, just to put this ray going down, it's probably going to cost around 18 bucks an acre. Just under 20 for a two bushel lentil crop. Maybe it does too, I don't even know what it's gonna do. This is really, really poor crop. And uh, so anyway, weed control has been a challenge for all the farmers uh, across the prairies this year because when you have poor crops, believe it or not, you have weedy fields because uh, the crops aren't there to run competition with the weeds. Like you shouldn't be able to see between these rows. You shouldn't be able to see between those. Whoops, sorry about that. I didn't mean to zoom in that much, but uh, but since you can, there's no competition for these lentils. And you can't spray kosher and Russian thistle out of lentils when you are uh, in crop. Your only weed control would be uh, before you seed. You could layer something down before you layer a herbicide down before you seed. That's pretty much the only option you got. So once the kosher comes in your lentils, you, you absolutely have zero that you can do with it. Unless you're gonna go out there with a pair of twin tin snips or something and try and snip every every plant off, but there isn't a herbicide that's going to take it out of your lentils without killing your lentils. So we're out here. Um, these lentils are definitely dry. They are ready to combine. But I don't really feel like trying to put that uh, kosher and Russian thistle through my combine. As you know, it does not go through the fend ideals very well. So I'm going to burn that stuff down, turn it brown, crispy, and then it's going to go through like dust. Well, okay, maybe not like dust, but it's going to go through a whole heck of a lot easier. Side note, if you were to spray these weeds with Roundup and wait the month for it to 
fully dry it down and kill it, even if it did kill it, um, just due to they're very hardy this year. I'm talking about the weeds because uh, they're very drought resistant and they're very hardy. Um, but anyways, even if you could kill it with Roundup and maybe you throw some heat in there, it's a little extra um, added herbicide you can throw in to help to burn down a little quicker. Even if you did, now I lost my train of thought where I was going with it. Oh yeah, now I remember. Um, a plant that's been killed by Roundup, um, it will literally like turn to dust because you've killed it inside and out. Because you know you're spraying them when they're green, so that way they're, you're gonna you want it the, you want that weed to take it in. But this diquad, the basically just remember like a, an acid that we're spraying on, it's killing it outside in. So it's not the plant isn't taking the chemical in, which means when you run it through a combine, it looks brown, but when you snip it in half, it's actually still green in the stem. Hence why it can actually regrow. So if you want to do a good job and actually kill the plant, you got to use Roundup. But Diquat will definitely burn it down, get you out there really quick. Uh, one week versus three or four. So there, there's a long week of difference. One day I'm gonna take this railing off. I'm serious about that. If I can ever remember. See, we're not we don't we're not spraying with our auto boom because it uh, it's not working currently. I'm gonna show you the sectional control just to refresh you from the spraying season. We got individual nozzle control on the trident. Sorry, it's kind of rough here. Just like that. Now I better pay attention where I'm going here. And then obviously the sectional control to go back into the pass. So Ashton is on our way up here to pick us up, take us home for the night. And uh, I'll finish this field in the morning when I can see. Right now we're up on top because it's flat, it's easy going. Um, believe me, it's sharp drop off over that way um, we have some 30 degree hills 30 degrees let me google that see what that is. correction it is um, I think it's around 16 degree 30 percent slopes how do I know that because the ideal combines uh, actually have a, uh, a an indicator to tell you the degrees of what you're climbing in hills so that's some of the steepest on our farm is 30 percent slopes and I do not want to do that with an auto boom at night. <laughs> Here is one hill. Oop. You're right, we are not going to go down that. Nope, turning around. Aborting mission. I actually just want to get a bunch more weight off before we start playing in the hills. It takes a lot more power as well. Don't want to be blowing any more O-rings and I have to. I'm missing because I'm trying to do and talk and video and everything all at the same time. I'll get that next time I come back on the straight pass. You guys see nothing. You see nothing. You see... I'm going to do it again. You see nothing. You see nothing. <laughs> okay, I got to concentrate. So I rarely ever do two headlands. That is a rare thing. And when I do, yes, I'm not running GPS when I do my headlands, unless it's a long pass. But if it's a curvy one like this, I'm just freehanding it, which obviously ups the risk if you're not paying attention that you could miss. Um, why did I do two right now? Uh, Cause I'm, I don't know why I did two. Cause I turned around and didn't wanna go down the hill. That's why. Otherwise I typically just make one round around the whole field and then just go up and back. There's Ashton, she came to pick us up. All right, we'll close down this job, hit the little house over here, and then we'll open it up tomorrow morning. Loading, 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 there we go, perfect. Lights off, adios. Hello. How you doing?
Thanks for coming all the way up here to pick me up. I know it's late. <laughs> all right, guys, I'll see you in the morning. We gotta stop and clean some windows here. Ashton cleaned mine. Oh boy, was, there's a speed hump. I need to clean hers. <laughs> right, Ashton? She's exhausted. What do we think? Is he any good? Oh, I almost dented my truck. Apparently I shouldn't put so much body into it. I, they don't build these trucks like they used to. Okay, maybe don't put your back into it, but <laughs> put your muscle into it. <laughs> Look it, it's bedtime. Mike Tyre, look, it's streak free. It is very streak. far okay, from the streak there. Streak free. Do you see a single streak in that? I think I see stars. Oh, <laughs> give me this thing there. Look at that. Isn't that a beauty? That's that a beauty. Terrible. The middle is all nasty. There we go. Look at that. Ah, you're right. That's terrible. That's terrible. Okay, we can do better. Always start from the top. Are you guys judging me right now? I really hope farming pans out for you. <laughs> I'm struggling here. Okay, that's it. I'm done. I, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I quit. Clearly Mike's uh, high school job was not working at the gas station. Oh, yeah. oh we, gotta, we gotta go to bed. We gotta go to bed. Oh, I've okay. seen better. <laughs> wait, wait, wait for it. Oh yeah. Final touches. Their final touches. It's never looked so good.